everyone. Welcome back to Marvel Live here at the Live Stream Lounge, and I am very excited, very pleased, because I am talking with the director of visual development from Marvel Studios, the one, the only, Andy Park. How are you, my friend? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me, Langston. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to ask, we're back in San Diego for the first time in a long time. How has the convention been for you? Oh, my gosh. The convention has been amazing. So glad to be back after the long hiatus that is COVID, of course. Mm -hmm. But I've been, I've been a fan of uh, Comic -Con, uh, San Diego Comic Con. I've been going since like high school, 1992, I think is the Ooh. first time I ever came here. And I got my first job at 19 years old, portfolio in hand, meeting Rob Liefeld. He gave me a job at Extreme Studios, Image Comics. So I had a long history with um, Comic-Con. That's awesome, yeah. So I want to talk about, kind of like about your origin story. So uh, can I take us through that? How did you come into your current role at Marvel Studios? Yeah, I kind of mentioned the comic books. I drew comic mm -hmm. books, Marvel comic books, image comic books for about 10 years. I made a switch um, about 15 years ago into concept art, mm -hmm. built a new portfolio. I, I worked in video games on the God of War series. And then around that time, I met a guy named Ryan Minerding. You might have heard of him. <laughs> yes, I, I did. We talked to him earlier, yeah. Charlie Wen, and they were forming the newly, um, the visual development team at Marvel Studios. Kevin Feige, knowing that there's going to be an interconnected group of uh, movies mm -hmm. moving forward, leading to the Avengers. They hired me to work, start working on the Avengers. So I've been working at Marvel Studios since 2010. It's my 12th year there. Um, and we've been designing the characters, um, doing keyframes, coming up with the, the look and feel of the films, working with Kevin, all the amazing directors for the past dozen years. It's been a ride. I can't imagine. <laughs> I can't imagine. Speaking of that ride, um, these movies have grown and, and it seems like every, every new Marvel Studios that comes out, it's bigger and more vibrant and more awesome. So what has it been like to see the Marvel films grow and evolve over the years since you started illustrating and now working with studios? Yeah, yeah I mean, it's been amazing because I, again, I was a fan, right? I started off as a fan. I, um, I remember I first started as an adolescent reading Iron Man. That was the Iron Man number 200. That's the <laughs> one that got me Mark Bright, Bob Layton, the Silver Centurion, Iron Man. And then from there, that point on, I yeah. collected everything Marvel, right? Mm -hmm. West Coast Avengers, the X-Men, Avengers, everything, right? Spider-Man. And then, um, um, sorry, I, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to remind you what your question was No, again. I wanted the, the, how you felt about the journey yeah, of oh, yeah, yeah. Marvel films grow, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I, I also get distracted when I think of the Silver yeah, Centurion yeah, armor. Totally, <laughs> totally, totally. So I remember as a fan watching Iron Man 1, right? And seeing Nick Fury come out. I was in that theater, just, just like everyone else that were hardcore fans, you know, my, my hands raised in the air, knowing exactly where they're leading to, right? But it was something that I never thought would ever happen as a fan, mm -hmm. that you could have main heroes all together in what can be a movie called The Avengers. So to be a part of this, seeing the evolution, watching Iron Man 1, watching um, Captain America, Thor. I started working there on Captain America 1, and then uh, on Thor, Avengers, and then from that point on, every single film you know, since then, right? And I've, been, I've seen the evolution. I've been there. I've watched the decision makers, worked with all the directors, Kevin Feige, and all the amazing artists in the visual development department. And you know, all the different directors from you know, the original directors, mm -hmm. Kenneth Branagh, to like the Russo brothers, Peyton Reed, Destin Daniel, Cretton, um, every single director mm -hmm. has a different vision, different flavor, right? Mm -hmm. But it's still in the family of, of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah. It's, it's essentially the same model as the comic books. That's true, yeah. Right? You got Jack Kirby, Stan mm -hmm. Lee, but you also have Jason Aaron in the, in the more exactly, modern, yeah. right? Kelly Sue the, the Conic. So, but it's all the same character, same universe. So we're seeing that exact same thing realized, actualized in, in live action for the past, whatever, 12 years, yeah. whatever, 30 films. Yeah, and now we've arrived at uh, a magnificent film, Marvel Studios' Thor, Love and Thunder. Thunder. I mean, talk about, this, I mean, again, because this movie is so vibrant, so a visual feast. So please, yeah, we're gonna look at some Runner. So please break it, talk us through this amazing, this is such a great, this is amazing. So please talk about the process of working on this, uh, this movie, continuing the story of Thor. Yeah, sure. Like, this is the second film I got to work with the uh, amazing Taika Waititi, right? Mm -hmm. um, he came, in, came into the studio, stormed into the, <laughs> the rooms, right? With his personality, so boisterous, so amazing, very fresh take on Thor. So being able to work on the, 
the second movie with Taika was nothing but a pleasure. I think um, leading the visual development team on this uh, with the amazing artists that we have, mm -hmm. the vision that is uh, Taika Waititi, like he, with Ragnarok, he wanted like Thor to be very grounded as, as far as his look, mm -hmm. right? Um, so we, it was mainly leathers, that kind of stuff. With, with um, Love and Thunder, he mm -hmm. wanted to go to the other extreme. So he wanted like, that's why he has the bright blues, the golds, the big old helmet mm -hmm. with a little eagle he you know, head on the, on the front. So it's just coming with all these different designs um, and concepts that are just really far, just really pushed. Mm -hmm. Taika's not playing it safe, right? So I think working on this, basically the sequel to the Taika mm -hmm. initial movie, right. right? It's just coming with these new ideas and working with him every single day. It's just, um, it, was, it was nothing but a pleasure just mm -hmm. to kind of really explore what is Thor. And in this one, doing more of a romantic comedy yeah. and bringing back Jane. Cause I, lo what, yeah. I, I love the love story between mm -hmm. Thor and Jane and being able to design the mighty Thor. Yes. Um, with Jane knowing that she's <laughs> going to get taller. Now, now she's like six feet, whatever, <laughs> with muscles and having that, that awesome like, costume from the mm -hmm. comics. I think it was an Esad Ribic original um, design and then taking that and translating it for the MCU. I mean, that's, that's the fun of our job. Mm -hmm. Taking the inspiration from the comic, uh, looking at the story that they're trying to tell in the MCU with Taika as a writer and the director, and then translating that to a reality that mm -hmm. is the MCU. Nice, and with the mighty Thor, I mean, it's, it's continuing something that you said that your career's been very female-centric, and that's something that you're very proud of, and that's something that you hold pride. So talk about that and like, you know, really developing, I mean, again, seeing the mighty Thor again on screen, I remember seeing the, the people losing their minds. It was so great. So please, like, talk about that aspect of your career, like the female-centric stuff and helping to develop these amazing female characters. Yeah, I think I've been very fortunate throughout my career because even when I drew comic books, uh, for whatever reason, I've been hired to draw and illustrate the stories of strong female characters. Um, I was, in the comic book world, I was more known for drawing uh, Tomb Raider, Laura mm -hmm. Croft. Um, and then when I, once I joined the MCU, a lot of the characters I got to have had, had the honor of designing from Black Widow throughout all the films to Scarlet Witch to uh, um, I helped design Gamora yes. and Mantis, um, Captain Marvel, uh, Wasp, um, and then you know, more, more recently with um, the Mighty Thor, James mm -hmm. Mighty Thor. So uh, it's something that I'm really proud of that I've been able to help bring the story of these strong female characters into the MCU, because each of them have their own aspect. They're all different, right? Mm -hmm. um, but then they, not only in their look, but in their, who they are as a mm -hmm. character. Like I love the story of Wanda, Yes. right? She's such a tragic character, mm -hmm. but she's so powerful. And then you have a character like Black Widow who doesn't have any powers, right? But her, she's, she's not less powerful as a character, mm -hmm. right? So being able to help come up with their look visually to help portray their story for the filmmakers, you know, it's, 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 it's an amazing job. Yeah, get right. to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so we're talking, uh, we see some of your, some of the amazing artwork for Wanda, and we just recently seen Wanda come to full fruition as a Scarlet Witch yeah. in uh, Marvel Studios' Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Briefly talk about really bringing from where, where Wanda started to now, this amazing look. Like, please, just briefly talk about, like, what it's been like bringing the Scarlet Witch yeah. through this journey visually as, a, as, a, as an artist. Yeah, uh, because, again, I... I, I I collected the West Coast Avengers, mm -hmm. right? So Wanda was in there, or the Scarlet Witch was in there. When I was first tasked to d help design Wanda, it was for Age of Ultron. Mm -hmm. Back then, they told me she's not going to be wearing her classic costume. Of course, the fanboy in me is like, oh, <laughs> man. You know, she's going to be wearing more real-world clothes, mm -hmm. so leather jackets, you know, skirts, you know, just anything real, mm -hmm. right? But nothing, no superhero outfit. Of course, I had to, as a fan, do some initial designs with the crown, and, but I, knowing that they're gonna shut it down and be like, <laughs> ah, nice try, right? <laughs> so, you know, her first couple of looks from there to Civil War is more of a, um, uh, more realistic, mm -hmm. right? With a leather jacket. Um, so, but then when Mary Levanos, the producer on WandaVision approached me and said, Kevin Feige has this new idea for WandaVision, and then eventually she's gonna turn into the Scarlet Witch, right? So then, of course, the fanboy in me is like, yes, finally, <laughs> you know, like, I'm going to be able to help tackle the classic look without doing the, you know, the swimsuit, mm -hmm, essentially. Exactly, yeah. And also not knowing that they would do that in the mm -hmm. Halloween episode, right? So I was going for, like, the more, what is, the, what is her version 
of the superhero costume inspired by the comic, and then, of course, playing with the crown, mm -hmm. right? So during that time, they were kind of like, is it going to be just an effect? Is it going to be like a solid crown? Of course, I was always trying to push for like, it's got to solidify. Yeah, yeah. Like, I want to see that solidify. So, you know, thank God, Matt Check, Chackman and the leadership, you know, uh, agreed with that. And, and then we got to see her come to full fruition as the Scarlet Witch, right? Yes. So I remember going to that final, close to the final fitting with Elizabeth Olsen <laughs> and um, costume designer Myers Rubio and specialty customers in an iron, iron, shoot, iron head? Iron heart. Uh, iron, <laughs> yeah, iron head. Uh, but, but, um, so, and then being amazed, seeing it there, you know, Elizabeth Olsen putting on the crown mm. in the costume, all of us were like ooing and aahing. And then seeing the final result in WandaVision was just like, you know, watching with my family, the final version at home on Disney Plus and just getting chills to see her, you know, come to life as the Scarlet Witch. Yeah, I just got chills you breaking that down because <laughs> it was such an incredible moment and such an incredible visualization and realization of that character. Andy, thank you so much for joining us. It's been an honor and a pleasure to pick your brain and hear your story working with Marvel Studios. Uh, hopefully we'll get to talk again. I just want to talk to you all the time about totally. all the cool designs <laughs> that you've done over the years. Um, but we are going to take a break and we're going to come back. But stay tuned for more here from Marvel here at San Diego Comic-Con 2022.